This is what a Corvus cube looks like. It has four points. But wait, shouldn't it have six, like how a three by three does? Hmm, not really. Although, like, three by threes have a thing where it would turn around the center, the mechanism of a skew actually turns around the corners. So why doesn't the core have eight tips, like the eight corners of a skew? Well, only half of the corners are actually part of the core, and the other half, which are diagonal to each other, are just decorative corners. A skew without its extra corners actually functions identically to pyramids if we take off its tips. So that raises the question, can we solve a skew like a pyramid? So to solve it like a pyramid, first you solve it like a pyramid, and then you solve the corners. And then, oh wait, no one ever actually developed this method. Well, I guess it's our time to do that. So I actually lied when I said these two are the same. This has uh, edges between its two corners, while this has centers. And edges can have two possible orientations, while centers can only have one. This means that solving a skew like a pyramid is actually easier than solving a pyramid. To take advantage of this simplification, I'm going to be using the backbone method, where normally you would create a long bar in the back and then do edge orientation. But using it on the skew will actually skip edge orientation, which makes it way simpler. The first step is to solve a bar, which is a center piece between two, any two offset corners. In this example, since we have a uh, red paired with one of its corners already, we only have to solve the other corner, which happens to be here, which we can do in one move. For the next step, we want to put our bar on the bottom, and then we can solve one center next to an adjacent corner, and another center next to the different adjacent corner. So here, we have our bar on the bottom, and these two corners both need adjacent centers. So here we can put the white next to here by doing that. And we already skipped the orange one here. For solving the last four corners, you're able to actually do that in one algorithm. And it, that recognition for the algorithm actually requires a few steps. The first of which is to recognize a corner orientation. So you can have three cases, solved, L, or double L. First, solved uh, is just all corners oriented. L, uh, two corners are on the same face, are facing in a direction, and you want them both to be facing towards you. And for double L, you want the top corners to be facing towards you, but you want the bottom one to be facing towards the left. So this is actually bad because uh, yellow is the bottom face and it's facing towards the right. But if we hold it so blue is on the top, then we can get green to be facing to the left. Now if we put that together, we can recognize some cases, like how this case is a double L case, and we can hold it like this. And then we can recognize that this piece needs to go over here, and this piece needs to go over here. So that means that L and D are swapped so then we can just do the algorithm from the spreadsheet. I'll have it in the description. And it's solved. Do I think this method is worth learning? I think so, but it has a lot of memorization when you're first starting out because you need to learn all the algorithms. But solving the pyramid step is very well optimized and pretty easy to learn. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out other videos of mine, like this video on the Pyramix Backbone method, which we simplified for this video, or a different method I created, like this Mega ZZ video. You can also leave a like and subscribe.